Mobile is an online video advertising and analytics platform company. So we have a technology that plugs into players on many of the major video hosting sites and online video platforms. And through that, we track billions of video streams every month. So we have the largest amount of video viewership data uh, other than YouTube uh, in the marketplace. And we also have a video advertising promotion platform where we work with brands and advertising agencies to help them promote and seed their videos and get their videos watched. And we do that on a cost per view basis. And it's 100% transparent. So brands and agencies don't have to worry about where their ads are showing. They know they're going to be on brand safe sites. And they can see where and for how long each video is being viewed uh, right down to the site level. Because you have the transparency right down to the site level uh, for the individual ad unit, um, you know, we've had many brands that say, you know, we're comfortable with the level of essentially transparency you're giving us, so we don't need those verification services. So right now we specialize in ads that are longer form content, so typically 30 to 90 seconds. And one of our premier ad units is served within a 300 by 250 display banner unit. Um, and so we are finding that that's very attractive to advertisers who want to get beyond the 15 and 30 second pre-roll. We collaborated with Dynamic Logic on a study, and one piece of the study was looking at exactly this. Mm -hmm. And we looked at 0 to 30, 30 to 90, and then 90 and above. And we saw the longest average completion rate and the total uh, average completion being highest for 30 to 90 seconds, which surprised us a little. I mean, I think intuitively people would think it's, it's 0 to 30. Um, but we basically intuited that you know, with the 30 to 90, people were getting a bit more of a storyline, a bit more of an engaged experience that as long as the creative was sufficient, and on average, in this case, it, uh, they, you know, across the, the sets of ads we looked at, they were, the people were sticking around on a you know, percentage basis longer than they were for the 0 to 30, where people were seeing either a repurposed TV spot they'd seen before, or just realized it was going to be a quick brand logo, and, and they weren't going to really learn anything or be engaged or have a, a sort of a higher level of content experience uh, than they would with 30 to 90, and that's what we saw. On that, it seems like one of the takeaways there is that A, it all hinges on the creative, and when it's a 90 second spot, typically the agency or the brand is creating new video content rather than repurposing TV stuff? You see both. You see both. Um, you know, we, did, we tried to have this across millions of ads, and so we weren't picking, you know, cherry picking the best creative. Obviously, that would skew the results. Um, but what we, we also looked at was in the same placements, the 30th, or sorry, the repurposed TV spot versus the made for web only stuff. And there wasn't a, a best of breed choice that was cut down the middle. What we saw was somewhat not surprisingly the made for web, actually before I go there, the, the repurposed TV spot had higher basically index ratings on awareness and brand, brand awareness and sort of ad awareness because again, people may have seen it uh, prior to viewing on the web already on TV. But what, for what really counts, purchase intent and brand favorability, which is really what brands are using online video for, the made for web only uh, was more effective than the repurposed TV spot in those factors. It seems like you're starting to see more um, recognizable talent doing online video long form commercials. Yeah, you definitely are. Um, I think you saw that in the Axe campaign as well. Um, people, uh, brands are going to celebrities, online influencers, etc., who are either already have a large following on YouTube or have that name and face recognition. Um, when, when they're telling the story, it's that much more interesting or attractive for people to continue viewing and, and listen to you know, the underlying brand message uh, delivered by a celebrity or influencer. Let's talk about that. Facebook. Um, Let's do it. <laughs> it's it's the, the de facto uh, subject, but it's something we just did a big study on. 
So video on Facebook. Video advertising on Facebook. Um, and actually video on Facebook in general as well. And so our CEO, Brett Wilson, released and presented this data at Omo Video last week. A couple things that were really interesting. First of all, Facebook's now the, according to Comscore, the number five uh, largest online video property on the internet, uh, almost without trying. Uh, they continue to climb that chart. And what we saw is in terms of referrals to videos, uh, Facebook is pushing Twitter for the longest engagement uh, with videos in terms of a referral source. We also, um, more importantly, looked at advertising on Facebook using video. And you know, you're all familiar with Facebook, but for sort of many different areas, you can find a video advertisement on Facebook. You can find it on the branded fan page uh, of a brand. You can find it in a sponsored ad unit, which is to the right and it'll blow out in an expandable. You'll see it in a banner placement beside an application. You'll see it in an interstitial within an application. And then you'll also see it within an application uh, as, a reward for, uh, as a reward for watching. You'll get virtual currency for some of the games that have virtual currency. And so we looked at all those different ad units across 25 campaigns, 60 million streams of video ads. And as a uh, benchmark, we also had the same ads running in a 300 by 250 on Comscore 500 sites outside of Facebook completely. And what we saw was level of engagement, completion rates, et cetera, highest for the virtual currency reward. Uh, second highest was the in banner beside an application. And the, and the actually the highest completion rate after virtual currency was interstitial. So, you know, in terms of thinking about, uh, from the point of view of a brand, how they go and use video advertising on Facebook, um, it's certainly uh, an encouraging uh, set of data that you can get longer engagement uh, on Facebook with the same video ad that you're placing around the internet in the 300 by 250. And more, most importantly, in terms from a brand point of view, the cost per views and the cost per minutes viewed, obviously with higher engagement, were lower for those spots versus outside of Facebook. So we thought that was pretty interesting data, certainly we, none we'd seen before in the marketplace. And just to clarify, is this only for ads related to video that was uploaded through Facebook's video uploader, or does this also include like, if I embed a YouTube video on my Facebook stream and my friends watch that and there's a video uh, like lower thirds kind of ad. So the, en so the engagement, um, for the referral source engagement I talked about for Facebook, that's all video on Facebook. The actual data I talked about for the video advertising, those are brand campaign videos that are being placed within Facebook. So they're not actually personal at UGC videos. But, but, but could those be brand, like the brand uploaded their video to YouTube and then placed the YouTube video on Facebook or the brand uploaded it through Facebook's video tool? It would be Facebook's video tool. Okay. Um, we did look at the branded fan page, which you can have a YouTube embed in your branded fan page, but that wasn't part of that data set looking at engagement and cost per view. What we're really focused on is making sure the unique viewers of those virtual currencies are verified. Um, and we have seen other companies struggle with basically multiple views of the same ad to rack up virtual currency. And so we've got a, a very tight control over the unique viewers and making sure that brands are paying for one unique viewer and not for the same person watching it 10 times to get your virtual currency. So we account for it that way. Absolutely our intent to, to join the race of, of video ad units um, that's, that's ongoing right now. And we intend to be able to offer every unit that a brand wants to use, um, just as everyone else wants to do. Uh, I think you know, probably the most interesting thing we've seen, or at least the ones that uh, are getting the most positive reviews, and I think brands are interested in, is the ad selector on Hulu, where you can actually choose the video you want to use. Um, you know, we've seen a positive press about that, and we've, we've heard from brands that, that that's an interesting idea. Um, I don't know how much targeting they're able to do, either to a person level, a profile level, et cetera, or that everyone's just seeing the same three ads, and you know, you basically got a one-third chance of hitting something that, that's um, relevant or contextually relevant to the viewer. Um, but it's a step in the right direction. Um, we are developing 
multiple ad formats in parallel. Um, video teasers is, is an interesting format where you get an autoplay of 15 seconds, either of the first 15 seconds or the most engaging part of the 90 second spot. Uh, and then there's a click to play to view the whole thing. Um, there's so, so in that scenario, mm -hmm. I, I load the page. You load the page. The video automatically starts playing. The ad unit plays first. And then it says, would you like to keep watching this ad or would you like to go straight to the video, the, the actual video you were trying to get to? Well, it depends if it's in stream or not. So the one we're developing at first would not be in stream. It'll be in a 300 by 250 display unit. And so what you have is sort of a, a, a video unit that auto plays. You'll probably have a play button over it. So anytime you can click to watch the whole video. Um, I haven't seen anyone else do that video teaser yet, though I think Tremor does have the something. I'm not sure if they use it in stream or not. So as, as a practical example of that, uh, you know, it's the World Cup, so it would be Here's 15 seconds of I forget whether it's the Nike or Adidas ad where like guys are doing you know it's like crazy. Yeah, you get the, the stuff, Wayne Rooney. And then you're just like, wow, I want to watch the whole thing. Exactly. So, exactly. so and just to clarify, that that's an that's a video <coughs> ad not related to video content. That's a video ad on the side nav of maybe an article. Right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I mean I think there's you know tens if not over 20 different ad units that we're seeing um, across our competitors and, and within our engin engineering team. What we want to be able to do with our analytics is basically work with brand advertisers to give them that transparency into which unit is the most effective uh, on an engagement basis, on a cost per view basis. So we can offer them any unit they want, uh, but ultimately we're going to optimize the most effective unit. Um, and we think our analytics are going to be able to separate us from the competition and be able to guide brand advertisers and agencies as to which units in which placements on which sites are going to be the most effective uh, from engagement and cost point of view. It's a combination. Yeah, if it's a combination, is it weight tilted one way or another? It's, it's skewed towards agencies right now. Um, working directly with brands, we definitely are working with what I call some of the more progressive brands in terms of digital advertising, where they have a you know a dedicated digital marketing group with in-house, um, and that they're familiar with Betty advertising. They've been doing it you know since it was available, um, and we're able to work directly with them because they know exactly what they want and they're educated about it. Um, we tend to work with some of the less progressive brands via via agencies who you know provide either they. They're providing sort of the overall campaign, and online video is just one component. Um, or they are, you know, they have the sophistication at the agency um, to be able to provide their clients with knowledge about how to use online video advertising effectively. Yeah, longer term, how do you see that skew changing? I think agencies will always be a component. Um, I think it's inevitable that you're going to get, you know, just as people become more comfortable with the advertising medium uh, within larger brands, that some of them will be more comfortable going direct to vendors. Um, so I think it'll it'll increase from a you know it'll skew towards the brands more. Um, but I don't see the agencies ever ever going away in terms of uh, providing the expertise they do. If you have kind of proprietary ad types and mm -hmm. Tremor has proprietary ad types and point roll and whoever else down the line. So, so I guess the, the challenge of, it's almost like the browser wars where you had standards, but then you had Netscape and IE wanting to innovate. Um, what's the role of collaboration between all of the vendors in the space so that somebody can create a single creative ad type that they know can kind of play everywhere versus having to create 12 different video ad types because you guys do this and Tremor does that and Point Roll does a third thing. Yeah, it's a major challenge uh, that we recognize for, for the agencies and the brands, um, just sort of this uh, disparate set of, of standards and platforms and ad units um, that just increases costs for everyone, essentially. You know, the, the, 
the level of collaboration, I would say, right now is, is minimal. Uh, it's still a hyper-competitive marketplace um, within the video ad network platform space. And you know, the IAB has traditionally played this role for, for display advertising. Um, the major players within the video space, including ourselves, are all part of the IAB. Um, it is a forum to, to work some of these issues out so that, that there are a set of standards that will ultimately benefit our customers, um, but I'd say it's early stages. Lots and not very much uh, in terms of where it's going or what the, the hope is for it and the actual practicality of it or the, actual, the reality of it currently. Um, and so we had a, a joint study with Bright Cove about three months ago and we looked at mobile uh, really from a, a surveying of 200 major customers and 10% were using some form of mobile video advertising and 50% intended to use it in the next 12 months. So we are on the cusp of, of mobile video advertising adoption and, and takeoff. Uh, you get into another set of platforms, another set of runtimes, another set of ad units. Um, so again, it's, it's education, uh, it's you know, everyone getting their tools and technologies in place. Um, but it's, it's the next, certainly the next frontier, um, and, and every brand and agency is interested in it. Um, but in terms of what's actually happening right now, it's, it's not significant. Now, I think it starts out with just sort of the repetitive brand awareness because it's easier. You don't have to integrate that geolocation data. Um, and you can, you can do it in a simple sort of interstitial format as you load an app. Um, you can do it in between. Uh, app functions, et cetera, and it's just you know a 15 second spot that they've either repurposed or they've just formatted down to, to whatever platform it's going to run on. Everybody again, I think I heard the, I don't know if you saw the panel last night, but it was a predictions for 2015 audience measurement conference. It was all about geolocation. I don't think it'll take five years. I thought that was, that was a little, little beyond what it'll need, um, but it'll take probably two to three years to really get to a place where you've got interactive mobile video ads that are interfacing uh, with the geolocation data um, that's, on your, that's on your handset and then is, is networked out to the things around you uh, and it's aware of that and you're using that effectively to actually drive people uh, to purchase, to you know, drive traffic to a storefront, et cetera. So on the analytics side, uh, I mean, from our point of view, it's, it's another platform to support. I will be releasing HTML5 analytics imminently. To our customers, you know, we don't want them to have, them to have to worry about that. They should see an aggregated set of analytics, you know, no matter what runtime a particular set of ads ran across. And that's our intent with our, with our analytics. It's, it'll be a single dashboard and we'll have every backend uh, technology necessary to provide that data. Uh, from an annual standpoint, it should really be the same. You know, we should be able to, and, and all the competitors in the marketplace will support ads that run on all of the all of the uh, the platforms: Flash, HTML5, and Silverlight, and whatever else um, <laughs> comes to be developed on whatever device we <laughs> continue to innovate and invent. Um, so it's it's a challenge for us from a from a technology development standpoint. Uh, it is. A cons you know, it's not a concern, but it should be a, something that the brands and marketing agencies are aware of, that, that the vendors are basically working through this process right now. I think 2010 is very much a, a technology development sort of uh, challenge, you know, watershed in terms of, of getting our pieces in place for these new, these new platforms. Um, but in the end, it's, it's our development challenge and, and we'll take care of it. And, it should really not be a, a point of issue for the, for the customers. It goes a little bit back to what we talked about before. I think they, they automatically went to the 15 and 30 second spot and they went to pre-roll. And pre-roll is still the vast majority, if you look on a total ad unit basis for video, it's still uh, well above 50% in terms of the mix. But what we are seeing, um, and it's really our sweet spot, is a longer form content where it's it's a how-to, it's a behind the scenes, it's a you know curated 
set of, of images or stories from, from their customers, etc. And, and you can't typically run that on a pre-roll. You don't really have the, the customer patience or the, the viewer patience to do that. And so they're starting to experiment and look at uh, ad units that we support, which are these longer form in banner stuff. Uh, they're looking at you know, expandables, interstitials. But really, the interruptive content like that uh, isn't, we don't see it as effective or as sort of viewer satisfying. So the non-interruptive content that's in the in banner um, that runs beside contextually relevant content and can be watched without leaving the page, without having to interrupt the thing you were doing previously, um, really showing high levels of engagement and, and good cost per view rates. And from an effectiveness standpoint, you know, you talked about dynamic logic, you know, awareness, brand favorability, purchase intent. But as, as advertisers are moving more towards long form, less interruptive, more sort of educational and engaging content, are they looking, you know, are they looking for different kinds of results instead of just the learning? You know? Yeah, no, they absolutely are. They're look, they've, we see a wide set of call to actions that they want. They want to drive people to a Facebook fan page. They want to drive people to a specific landing page on their site. Uh, they want to drive people to use a coupon to purchase a sample. So they're really, and we're helping them be innovative around what are the, the clickable overlays, what are the Facebook and Twitter sharing, and what are the, the mediums and dynamics you can use in an inter interactive long form ad to get that learning awareness and education, but still have a call to action or a, a result from it um, that ultimately ends up driving sales for the brand. Before I said the 30 to 90, is, has the highest completion rate. Okay, so, so in terms of level of engagement, the tubi. they're getting the tubi. Uh, <laughs> we, we're looking at, uh, we're always trying to f figure out how to basically compare apples to apples uh, across a set of ad units, brands, et cetera, and then look at click-through rates for those ads. But it's, it's a, a data, not a data integrity, but sort of a data correctness issue in terms of what can you actually compare in terms of different ads, where they ran, uh, what, was, what was the user doing at the time, et cetera, in terms of actually comparing click-through rates across ads to provide a brand with this is what needs to be in your video um, in order to drive the highest click-through rates. So we're constantly looking at it. I don't have, have a perfect answer for you right now. What I will say is when every single brand uh, customer can look at our analytics dashboard and see a second by second drop off rate. So you can literally run the video on one side of the page and then see the total number of views drop off uh, as the video plays across. So brands use that to look at their creatives uh, after a campaign, anywhere during a campaign and see you know, what point in the creative are we really losing people and, and why is that happening and, and should we adjust the creative to not have that, that essentially that lull, lull that dull spot. I have a mobile question which is um, which, which is uh, AT&T stuff there all you can eat buffet data plan yeah. and I'm wondering if there's conversation within the agencies within yourself about how that might affect the adoption of mobile video as an ad unit because as a consumer, I might be wary, and I, if I'm on at and I might be wary of, oh my God, they're, they're, they're throwing an ad unit, a video ad unit at me and I need to get out of this because I don't want to go up to the next data plan. And I was wondering if there's been any discussion about how that might affect the adoption yeah, of Yeah, there has. I mean, it's, it's a concern, definitely. I think it's, it's more of a concern for the YouTubes, the Daily Motions, the Meta Cafes of the world, where you're going to be consuming more than 30 to 90 seconds of video at a time, and you, that's where you're going to pretty quickly get over two gigabytes. But at the same time, you know, as soon as you go away from unlimited, you're going to have a set of consumers that are constantly thinking about, oh, what's the bandwidth on that piece of content? What's the bandwidth on that piece of content? Uh, and so it'll, it'll, you know, it'll be have, it's an issue that has to be considered um, by people who are 
using either video online or video advertising online. But again, it's so early in the game that I don't think anyone's you know, come up with an approach to that. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what Verizon does come the fall or come the spring in terms of what they offer. I would say you know, focus on the creative. The, I mean, it, it's sort of obvious, but at the same time, you'd be surprised how many people just put together some type of video and throw it up on the, on the web. Uh, so, you know, an engaging quality creative pays off in dividends several times over. Uh, a presence on YouTube can never be discounted, you know, and most brands have, have done this relatively successfully. They have their own branded page. They're aware of how important driving YouTube views is. Uh, I would say, you know, be aware of the types of ad units you're using. Don't default to the pre-roll. It's easy to do. Um, People are very concerned about being associated with premium content, and that's often you know, the primary motivation behind using pre-roll, is because most of the content that's in front of pre-roll or behind pre-roll is, uh, is relatively premium. Um, but at the same time, there are ways, uh, including using the T-Mobile platform, to have branded uh, video content with a non-interruptive uh, medium associated with premium content. And fourth, you know, be aware of the need for transparency uh, and essentially verification and confidence that your ads are running where you think they are and you're, um, you're paying on a cost per view basis and you're not paying by impression. Uh, most of the pre-roll is still priced on a CPM basis and we really, really advocate focusing on that cost per view and making sure that you know on a total total uh, viewed minute basis you, you're getting the most bang for your buck and we think you can do that by really focusing on cost per view and, and having a set of analytics behind it that shows you where and for how long each of your video ad, ad units reviewed